Welcome to Move Church. Thanks for joining us for this week's message. We pray this message will both move and inspire you to make a decision into an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. This relationship is where you obtain freedom and will help value your purpose and give you the power to engage your world. Now to the message. How are we doing, everybody? We doing all right? That's better. That's better. Amen. Praise God. So great to see everybody. Glad that you are here. If you are watching us online and have not made it back to church yet, I want to look into the camera and just welcome you today to Move Church. Can we put our hands together, those that's here on campus, and welcome everybody that's online. We love you. We love you. We miss you. And we can't wait for you to get back. We love you so much. And uh, it's just an exciting time. Glad that you're here. Welcome to week number four of a series started a few weeks back called Preparing for a Miracle, where we're just preparing our minds, preparing our hearts for God to do something great in all of us, in our church, in your family, in you as an individual. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll just talk a little bit more to the seven days of prayer. Uh, it's, uh, it's an initiative that as we are embarking upon a very pivotal moment in our country, we are in an election season, a week and a day or two away from an election. It's been a very tough year for our nation. Uh, we've been through a lot, and our prayer team just wanted to come and just gather and pray. And so that's what we're going to do starting at 7 o'clock tomorrow night for an hour just to come and pray and worship. And so we'd just love for you to be here and, uh, and uh, just join us throughout these days, uh, fasting and praying and believing with us. Hey, how many loves the fall time? Anybody like the fall time? You love the weather right? Just the coolness that's in the air, uh, and uh, it's just a great time. Holidays are coming up. Can you believe the year is almost over? Uh, in fact, uh, last night I was uh, downstairs, and I heard Christmas music playing, and I thought, my gosh, what in the world? And it's Cannon. He's already, like, getting ready for, for the holidays. I mean, we got to solo that down a little bit, you know what I mean? It's not quite ready yet, but man, I just love this time. And, and one of the reasons for this season that I love so much is we're entering into a season here that we're very passionate about as a church, uh, and uh, it's called our Legacy Offering Season. Uh, and over the next month, you're going to be hearing us talk a lot about just inviting you to pray and consider uh, giving a gift, a legacy offering. We, we don't take... Uh, we only take one special offering a year here at this church, uh, and, uh, and that is legacy offering. 100% of it goes outside this house. We give it away, uh, and uh, we've just been doing some great things uh, throughout, uh, you know, the, the, the years with our legacy offering, and uh, the, one of the greatest things is our school in Ethiopia, uh, and uh, we're just excited about that. I, I'll tell you more about that in just a little bit, but first, though, I just wanted to let you know where we're going uh, and tell you, everybody say four weeks. Four weeks from today, we were gonna, we're going to be launching our most popular series of the year, right? It's a very evangelistic series, and what I mean by that, if there's ever been an opportunity or a time that you thought, man, I'd like to bring a friend to church, this is going to be the time for you to do it, all right? It's a very exciting time. It's a series that we simply call At the Movies. All right, at the movies, and, and it's where we take movies, modern day movies that we all love and watch and, and enjoy watching that have redemption stories in them, and then we apply, we, we show clips, and then we preach in between the clips. It's just a cool time. I believe that if Jesus was walking in 2020 on this earth, he would take whatever uh, is, is reaching people, and he would use it. That's what he did. He would take parables of things that, that, that people were familiar with in his day and hour and use it to apply a spiritual truth. That's what we do with At The Movies. It's an exciting time. I, I pray that you will invite. We're going to be talking about it leading up to it. We'll have invite cards for you to bring, you know, hand out to your friends. We want you to get excited. And then obviously Christmas is on the heels, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and all of that. Uh, it's just a great time uh, that's coming. I just tell you that just so that you can kind of Put on your calendar uh, and uh, so that you know where we're going. Hey, I love our church. I 
love our mission. Uh, you know, and uh, if you, if this is your first time or if you've been here for a long time, uh, out on our wall, we have, we have uh, the, the, the word move. Uh, and a part of the word move, uh, we have, it, it, we've made it our vision statement, right? And, uh, and I just love, uh, you know, that, that we can keep it simple. Uh, you know, the M in move is all about making a decision. We believe and trust and know that everybody here today, everybody in Woodbridge, everybody in Northern Virginia need to make a decision to follow Jesus, right? And make him the Lord of their life. Not just uh, because, uh, you know, God's into religion. He's not into religion. He's into relationship. And so we believe everybody needs to make a decision. All of us, can I, let, let me say this, all of us have steps to take. None of us have arrived yet. Maybe you need to make a decision to follow him today. Maybe you need to make a decision to be baptized. Maybe you need to make a decision to get in a group. We, mean, we need to constantly be making decisions to move closer to him. The Owen move is, is about obtaining freedom. Everybody say obtain freedom. I need, I need to be free. After I get into relationship uh, with God, he wants to set us free. Can I get an amen somebody? Right? How many knows we all have issues? Turn to your neighbor and shout, you got issues. <laughs> yeah, we all have issues. And if you don't think you have an issue, that's your issue, okay? I'm just saying. We all have, like all God's people have issues. And, and, uh, and we believe that the best way that we can help you do life uh, and, and, and deal with those issues and deal with those things that, that seek to bind us and hold us captive is through groups. And so uh, that's why you hear us talk three semesters a year about joining a group, getting in, doing life together with other believers because we believe true life change happens in the context of relationship. Amen? The V is all about what? Value your purpose. This is all on the wall. When you go out, you'll see it. We want it to constantly be there, but I'm just calling it to your attention. We believe that everybody here was made for a purpose. Everybody say, I've got a purpose. God says, I was made with a purpose. While I was in my mama's womb, I was made for a purpose, right? And we want you to value that purpose, and we believe that our best way to do that is to help take you through what we call M-Track. It's a four-step process, and, and if you've not got on the M-Track yet, please get on it. But value it. Learn who you are, who it is God has made you to be, because God's got something great for you to do. And then obviously the E is about engaging your world, and we believe that you should be actively uh, we, engaging your world uh, and doing what it is that God has called you taking your gifts, your talents, your abilities, join the crew. Get a, and we believe that's how it's done here at, at, at Move Church on campus is serving the body of Christ, joining us and, uh, and, and serving each other uh, together. All right? All right, let's dive in. How many is ready for the word this morning? You ready for the word? All right, let's dive into it. We're going to continue the series that, that uh, I started a few weeks ago called Preparing for a Miracle. Our miracle story today is found in Matthew chapter 9, verse 20. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, you can turn. It's on the screen as well. Let's, let's, let's dive into this. Verse 20 says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years. Everybody say 12 years. Now, come on, 12 years, that's a long, long time, amen? 12 years she had been diseased with this issue. She came behind him and touched the hem of his garment, right? Now, just to understand the story, Jesus is walking down the street. Actually, he's on his way to visit someone else that had a need, uh, and he was going to visit that person as he's on the street, he is approached without him even knowing this woman comes up from behind him and reaches out to try to touch his garment, right? Now, listen, I remember I grew up in a, uh, in a pastor's home all my life. I've been in church, right? And I remember hearing this phrase and hearing this, uh, you know, uh, story or here in the Bible. And, and so in the innocent mind of a child, like you would, you know, you, you would think, well, does she have an issue with blood? Right? Like, it, it, what, what, what's the issue? Does she have, like, does she not like looking at blood or whatever, right? And, and because I kind of, I, I got that issue too. You know what I mean? 
Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, in fact, our firstborn, Landon, when he was born, um, I'll, I'll never forget. They told me, okay, the time is approaching. Uh, get ready. Your baby's about to come. And so they said, come, you know, come on down and, and, and get prepared. And when I got down there, like, I just lost it. Like, I, I mean, no, I fainted. You know what I mean? Like, I just passed out. You know what I mean? I lost, like, I couldn't take it, right? And Chantel has always amazed me. Uh, our kids would fall and bust their eye or bust their nose, bust their mouth, blood going everywhere. And how many knows that Mark, like, I freak out, right? I think they're dying, and Chantel's just cool, calm, and collective, and, you know. I, but, but I just don't do good with blood. Obviously, as it turns out, though, I didn't have what she had. Like, she, she had an issue with blood, right? My first point this morning is this. Passivity will not produce possibility. Passivity will not produce possibility, right? I, and I wanted to let you know this starting out in this story because we're in this series where we're asking God, we're preparing our mind, we're preparing our heart, like we're creating space for us to understand that with God all things are possible. And I want somebody to recognize today and help me to recognize and understand that as long as we stay inside, if that lady would have stayed inside and, and if she would have been passive, she would have never received the miracle. Passivity will not lead you to possibility. You got to recognize, you got to, you got to get engaged, you got to prepare, you got to create space, you got to make room for the possibility that there's a God that is able to do more than you can. That there's a God that's able to do more than the doctors have been able to do for the past 12 years. Are you hearing me somebody? Right? Passivity will not produce possibility for 12 years. Come, come on, say 12 years. 12 years she's went to the doctor. She spent all of her money. She's, she, she's. 12 years, she struggled with this issue, and here she was, now on this day, heard that Jesus, excuse me, was coming down the road, and she got out in the street, she, keep, she pushed her way through the crowd, she put herself in a position, she postured herself in a way like she is literally moving toward her miracle. And after 12 long years, can I, can, I, can I help you realize today there's a difference between patience and passivity? There's a difference. Listen, how many knows that Pastor Mark does not do, I, I don't have a lot of patience, all right? All right, I, I'm just, if we're going to be truthful today, I struggle with patience. I live with a person that she's better with it than, than I am, but she struggles at time with patience. I'm not going to tell you who she is uh, because her mama's here today, mom and mother-in-law. Can we just give it up for my mother-in-law today? We love you, Ma. Amen. But I don't do good in traffic, in lines, in the store. Like, I just don't do good with that kind of stuff. In fact, this week, uh, Ken and I have to, on my way to work, I take him to the bus stop, right? And how many knows that uh, we, we live in the country and, and uh, there's only one place that I can, I have the, if I get behind somebody slow, there's only one place that I've got to pass somebody if they're going slow. How many knows three times this week I got behind somebody slow and because of that, I'm sitting there waiting, anticipating, would you come on, would you move? And how many knows three days this week, I missed the bus stop. And I had to take Cannon all the way down past, past Fredericksburg to school. I'm trying to help you recognize today. Like, I think that, that when you recognize and understand, let me, let me say it like this. Patience is being able to tolerate delays on the way to where you're going. Patience is being able to tolerate delays on the way to, to where you're going. But passivity is when a person lacks initiative, that they can't get up out of the bed. They, what, what passivity is saying, I'm just going to, if it happens, it happens. It, it, you know, it, it is going to be what it's going to be. Pa you know, patience is waiting, delayed, waiting for it to happen. But passivity says, oh, you know, I just don't have the initiative. I'm just not going to put up forth the effort. I'm a slow mover. This woman has been tolerant of delays for 12 long years, which means she has shown a lot of patience. Now, come on, everybody. There's a difference in being passive 
and being patient. Here we are 2,000 years later, and here we're still talking about a little lady that was not, it was not good enough for her just to hear about Jesus. It was not good enough for her just to stay in her house and stay, remain sick. She made up her mind that I'm going to move toward the possibility. I'm going to move and I'm going to advance. My second point this morning is this. Faith is not observation. Faith is participation. Faith is not sitting on the sidelines of life, dealing with my struggle, dealing with my circumstance, waiting for it to just pass away. How many knows? Come on, somebody. Faith is not observation. Faith is participation. James 2 verse 17, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is what? Is what? Faith without works is dead. So I want to help you today to understand when you think of faith, don't just think of it as something in your mind. Like, listen, it's easy to have faith when you come together and worship together with God's people. But my challenge to you, what are you going to, like, are you going to engage in that faith tomorrow? Are you going to engage Tuesday and Wednesday? Like, it's easy to say, and I, I, I want to give you a warning today and challenge you not to boast and say, I've got great faith if you don't have action to back up that faith. Come on, it's a little too quiet in here, so you got to, don't make me start amening myself, all right? Come on. Like, like you got to recognize faith is dead. This is not Mark's word. This is God's word. Mark McLeod's not saying this. God is saying, like, if you got to engage in the possibility and understand that God has put you in a position to recognize that that song that we sung today, he is a miracle worker. He's a way maker, but I've got to participate and engage. I just can't wait for it to happen. i got to put faith. Faith without works is what? Dead. It's dead. Come on, anybody hearing me right now? Like you might, and what I'm trying to say is you might have had faith. You might, maybe a prior faith, maybe long ago, and three years ago, five years ago, but today your faith is questionable because you're sitting on the sideline, and this little lady made up her mind, I'm not going to sit on the sideline. I'm going to engage my faith, and I'm going to believe. Scripture says we walk what? By faith. Come on, we walk by faith. Come on, we walk by faith. It didn't say we sit by faith. We walk. We're moving. We're advancing. I believe God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above. God is able. All things are possible. I'm not going to sit in my house and fret over my circumstance, but I believe that God, I'm preparing my mind for the possibility that if God touches, if I can just but touch his garment, she said. She had the faith to believe. So this woman had an issue of blood for 12 long years. Verse 21, for she said within herself, notice she got to where she was because she said within herself. You got to have it within yourself. Listen, it's not good enough. Listen, Pastor Mark can't be with you tomorrow. Pastor Mark can't. Like, it's not good enough just coming to church and hearing the preacher talk about faith. I got to have it within myself. She said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I will be made whole. What she's saying to herself is what moved her from the sideline to get out on the street. And listen, if you're saying the wrong things to you, if you're to yourself, if you're saying and speaking the wrong things, you're never going to be able to make it to the street to be able to touch the hem of his garment if you're saying and thinking negative instead of understanding that there's a God that said he could do all things. Are you hearing me, somebody? 
I'm trying to challenge your faith in this whole series that's about preparing your mind, making room for the possibility. Like it's not good enough for me just to acknowledge where I am. I got to recognize that God wants me to, to take me from where I am to where he wants to take me to. Because listen, I think a lot of times if you overthink, you underact. Like if you, if you overthink the situation that you're in, the circumstance that you're facing, like if you only dwell on the circumstance, it's easy for you to underact because you're intimidated by the opposition that's against you. No, no, listen, I know there's some things that you need to think, and I know that there's some things that, that you need to process in life, but there is a lot of things that you do not need to process as a believer, there's a lot of things that you just need to understand and recognize because, like, if you do, the habit of hesitation will hold you back. Like, if you become hesitant, you will create a habit. Like, instead of moving forward, you'll hesitate. And there's things, listen, there's, a, there's several things that I could talk about, but I want to just take just a moment and do a little teaching and help you to understand. And I want to slow down just a minute and, 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 and talk about an area because we're entering into legacy offering season and, and it's something that, that I need to discuss because I want to help you and I want to challenge you because I want you to grow in your faith and I want you to understand and, and because as we talk about legacy offering, like what is that? Like one time a year, uh, Pastor Mark comes and, and we present you with an opportunity to, to just extend your faith and, and reach out by faith and, and give an offering that, uh, that, that's going to be 100% of it is going to be given away. Now listen, guys, as you give every week, every month, thousands of dollars that you give, we give right back out. We pay a tithe uh, of what comes into this church. We pay it back out. Right? And so you got to, I want you to know that, that every month we're sending thousands of dollars, whether it's uh, helping every child know God's word or, or, or planting churches across America and the world or, or right here locally uh, in the homeless ministry and different organizations that we sow into. Like we thousands of dollars every month, but there's one time a year that we receive this offering that, that we have an opportunity. And I'm hoping that I can help some of you prepare your hearts for what's coming in the next few weeks to give you an opportunity because listen as a believer when it comes and, and listen all you got to do is start talking about giving in church and notice how quiet it is right now like it's gotten really quiet right notice how quiet you are <laughs> you're you everybody's everybody's just clammed up right now like, oh god here he goes well, I want you to know, listen, uh, giving is one of those areas that no believer should have any hesitation whatsoever in doing. Shouldn't. There's, listen, let me say it like this. If you are a believer in Christ and there is a hesitation to give, that hesitation is not your friend. It's your enemy. Because there's a God that has a greater and a bigger plan for your life. And as long as we're hesitant to go in faith with him, we're going to be sitting on the sideline and not experiencing the blessings that God has in store for us. Praise God. Thank you for that amen. I was about to amen myself. Amen. So here's what, like, why do I give, Mark? Why, why do we give? All right, number one, I, I want to give you three things real quick. Giving is an attribute of God. Listen, you will never be more like God than when you're giving. Why? John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he, come on, for God so loved the world that he gave. Like, if I want to become like God, I've got to learn to be a giver. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. That's scripture. Mark didn't say that. God said that. Andre said earlier that, that we need to be cheerful givers. Cheerful givers. Like, we need to be cheerful. Everybody say, I got to laugh. I got to laugh when I give. And if I can't laugh when I give and be happy, don't give. Because I've got to recognize and understand that it, giving is an attribute of God. Number two, giving is planting a seed. 
When I give, I'm planting seed, Luke 6, 38. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you give or you use, it will be measured to you. Galatians tells us God will not be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he will reap. Like whatever you're giving out, God is going to bring back. It's going to come poured in your lap. So here's a good question I give to you today, and I want you to ask yourself, am I preparing for a good harvest in my life? Am I sowing seeds? Because listen, I, I think that's important because if we don't understand, if we don't ask ourselves that question, there's times that we can, we can expect a harvest. We can expect a harvest, but we didn't sow any seeds to reap the harvest. Like we can get frustrated with God because he didn't come through and meet our financial need. But we didn't sow in order to reap. Are you following me, somebody? All right, I know it's really quiet. Just, just hang with me. Third reason why we should never hesitate to give is giving changes who you are. How many knows that when we come into this earth, every last one of us are selfish people? Every one of us comes selfish. Ever been in a delivery room? What does them babies do? First thing they do, ah! They start yelling, crying. Why? Demanding attention. Selfish. I need help. Change my diaper. Ah, I'm hungry. Ah, right? And listen, the older they get, the more selfish they become. Like, I'd like to think it would get better, but it don't. Right? They just become more selfish. Listen, we're blessed to have a, a little two-year-old grandbaby. And uh, I love that little girl. She's almost three, be three in January. But man, I love her to death. She's the sweetest. She's the smartest little girl I've ever seen. Uh, you know, Poppy loves me some Lakin, and, and I just love loving on her. And, and, and I want to think that she loves me just as much as I love her. Uh, but uh, listen, there's many times through the day, through the week, like most of the time, <laughs> like she doesn't think of anybody but herself. She don't think anybody, she's selfish, right? Like, I can be watching the news and she comes up and give me the remote. I want to watch Mickey Mouse. In fact, I caught her last night in the house and she had the remote and we got Comcast and we got that button you can click uh, and say, you know, uh, whatever, you know, and it will take you automatically. And I, caught, and I was watching the news <laughs> and I walk, uh, she was walking through the house, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse. Because she had asked me to change it, and I didn't change it. <laughs> Listen, guys, you and I are the same way. And, what, and listen, what Lakin wants is her way, right? And there's times we tell her to do something, and she says, no. And it's not that she don't have a really good reason not to do it. It's just because we ask her to do something, she says, no. Right? And listen, I hate to disappoint you. Your children are selfish too. I hate to tell you, your grandbabies are selfish too. I just need to feel like I need to qualify that, right? Here's the point I'm trying to make this morning. Giving is God's remedy to selfishness. R giving changes who you are. Are. Giving puts God first. Giving puts others first. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Giving changes my selfish heart. Listen, it's not the fact that God needs my money. He owns a cattle of a thousand hills. He don't need my little offering, my, my little tithe. He don't need it, but it's all about principle of first, putting him first in the position that he is in my life. Are you hearing me, somebody? And when I choose to give, it's placing him at a priority. And so I'm telling you today, you may not have an issue of blood. Maybe you've got an issue of giving. 
And listen, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. You can be a teenager. You can be a young adult. You can be older. It doesn't, God is looking. And and I'm talking more than just resources. I'm talking your time. I'm talking your gifts. I'm talking your talents, your abilities. What are you doing with what God has blessed you with? My heart just beat out of my chest this week. Uh, Canon, uh, I had, had uh, you know, uh, middle school is starting right now today upstairs. And so I had reached out to Marcus uh, and uh, his team leader and, and told him that, uh, Marcus, don't put Cannon on the schedule to serve during third service this week. And later on, Cannon came home from school and he found out that I had, uh, he saw the schedule come out and he saw that he was not placed on the schedule. And, and he said, Dad, no, you got to call him back. No, I'm talking my little 13-year-old son that's back there right now running the lights that you've been watching today. I'm, he said, Dad, don't take, call him back and tell him that's the service that we live stream. That's the, he needs me. He's counting on me. Make sure that I'm on the schedule. And I thought, how much can we learn from a 13-year-old that has an understanding and a desire? Place me wherever you want. I want to be used by God. I want to help people draw closer to God. I'm trying to help you today. That little lady could have sit in her house and said, I'm sick. I've been sick. There's no, no use for me getting out in the street. But she got up because she made up her mind that I'm going to be healed. Like today is the day. Today is the day. Are you hearing me, anybody? Today is the day. I'm going to experience a breakthrough today. I'm going to have a new beginning today. And I'm just trying to challenge your faith today to believe, to go there with me. Right? Let me talk about this just for a little more because I want to help people. Because sometimes... In order to help people, you have to give truth, right? You got to give truth to the condition. How many knows when you go to a doctor, right? Like you don't want him just to tap around on you and not tell you the truth, right? Like if there's an issue, you want to know the issue. Tell me the truth, doc. Like at the end of uh, 2018, I had a situation. My arm went limp and... uh, um, I didn't know what it was. Chantel freaked out. We both kind of freaked out. And, you know, they put me in the hospital. And, and, and uh, they, I mean, they tested everything, guys. Like everything, man. They put me in the, what was it, MRIs and CAT scans, like everything. The only, the only thing that they found out, and we really don't know what happened in that instance. The only thing they found out is I've got what they call a Chiari, right? A Chiari, and, 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 and come to find out, it comes from birth. Uh, and uh, there's a deformity in the bottom base of my brain, uh, and uh, and I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, we knew something was wrong with that dude, but <laughs> we, yeah, we, we knew, now we know, right? Chiari, Chiari of the brain, right? Uh, but, but man, I was like, Doc, I want, and, and I was willing, I went to Bethesda or, or, or Germantown, like wherever they told me to go, I went, right? Because we want to know, Right? And listen, I don't know individually who this applies to, but I do know that when you bring up the subject, like this happens in our society, it happens in churches, like when you bring up this subject and we talk about this, right, uh, there's always this pause, there's always this hesitation that people have when, when, when you start talking about giving and money, right, and church. And listen, we don't want anything from you. We want everything for you. God's not, that, that's, that's what we want, all right? But, but a lot of times we, we hit the pause button, like the alarm button, right? Stop, nope, stop, no can't. Listen, last week uh, we were at a, at, a, at a ball game and Cannon was playing soccer. And uh, um, I was standing on the end, on the sidewalk. I had not walked out in the field. Chantel was watching from the, from the car, watching the game. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, Cannon was coming down the field. And, and how many knows that Mark can get crazy when, you know, I, I love watching my kids play. And, 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 oh, go, 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 go. You know what I mean? I'm yelling and screaming. And, 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 and he scores a goal. And I'm going nuts. Ah! You know what I mean? And all of a sudden, I heard this honk, honk, honk. Somebody's car alarm went off, right? I mean, and, and, and they honk, 
cloak. And I'm thinking, surely they're going to take your button out, you know, somebody, wherever you are, all these people, turn your alarm off. We're trying to watch a game. Honk, honk. And all of a sudden, I get this phone call. And it was Chantel. And she said, Mark, get down here now. The alarm's going off. Evidently, what I had done is I had locked her in the car. When she went to get out, the alarm went off. Bonk. And so I'm sitting there complaining about a situation that was my fault. That was my alarm. That was my situation. It was my alarm. Are you hearing me, anybody? And if we're not careful, we can, we can sit in church and we can hear this subject. And listen, I apologize for people in my profession that have put images in your mind that, that have caused you to think that church is all about money. It's not. We're not. That's not what we're here for. My goal is to help you grow because there's a God, a big, generous God that wants to connect you with his supernatural power. And we got to be willing, we got to be willing to engage in the possibility. We got to engage. And if we're not careful, the alarm, bronk, Bark, bark, and that alarm, that faulty alarm is actually your alarm. If you feel alarmed about the topic, perhaps your horn, your alarm is going off. And I'm challenging you, listen, the Christian life is an abundant life. It's not a small mind, it's a big, generous, giving life. And we just have to understand that. So I'm going to close as the musicians come. Verse 22 says, but Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, daughter Be of good comfort, thy faith. Everybody say, thy faith. Be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Come on, remember with me, just. Come on, somebody. Remember with me. Jesus was going somewhere else. To heal someone else, this little lady comes out on the street, reaches out to touch him. My question to you this morning, if if her believing had been different, where would she have been at that moment versus where she was? See, the bottom line, she would have been somewhere different than where she was. But because she engaged in the possibility that I've heard about a man that is able to do all things, that has all power in heaven and in earth because she engaged in the possibility. She got out into the street, reached out her hand, and the Bible says, listen, the Bible doesn't say God made her whole. You know what the Bible says? No, listen, we know God is the only one that works miracles, right? Uh, You know, we know that. But the Bible says, Jesus says, your faith, your faith, come on, my brother, your faith, come on, my sister, your faith, your faith hath made thee whole. So my final thought today is your believing affects your receiving. When you believe, you open yourself to the possibility. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Mark, you don't know where I'm at right now. No, I don't. But there's a God that created you in his own image that wants you to participate in the process. Your job is process. Your job is believing. Your job is trusting. 
It's his job for the outcome. I just got to believe. I got to trust. The truth is we are a part of the possibility. Your faith. I told you this last week. Listen, whatever, the will of God doesn't just happen. It's not whatever happens. And whatever happens is not the will of God. God wants us to participate with him on this earth. Faith is not observation. Faith is not looking at my circumstance and and, and drowning in my tears and and, 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 in my sorrow. Faith is participating in, I know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. God can get me out of this situation. God can change my finances. God can change my marriage. God can change my children. God can. I got to believe that. My hope. My hope for our church is that we would not never, we would never be a tentative church, a a hesitant church, a church that holds back, but that we would move forward. Come on, somebody, if you're online and you're watching, man, just, just believe with me and trust with me. Hold on to the promises of God. Don't give up. 12, everybody say 12 years but she kept the possibility alive. And I'm challenging somebody today. Keep believing. Be proactive. When you hear me, I've been asking this question, what am I believing God for? When I ask that question, have the faith to believe, to go for it. Whatever it is, whatever you're trusting for, come on as you stand to your feet. I'm going to be an initiator of the possibility that God can do everything.